Steph, you guys were up at 24 at a point in time in this game. Where did you see the wheels kind of fall off, and how did you guys get to the point where we're at right now? Um, in our first half was pretty solid. Probably the best basketball we played on both sides of the floor. Um, built up that big lead, had a rough last two possessions in the first half. And um, I think I missed the two for one. I lost it on a turnover, so it gave him a little bit of momentum. In the third quarter, we we responded pretty well. <clears throat> Had a couple untimely turnovers to start, like, a, a momentum run. And then, you know, they they got to the foul line uh, 42 times, which... It's going to do a lot of things, obviously, easy points, but even on misses or makes, like, they get to set their defense, and they were starting to blitz me pretty much everywhere. We got some pretty good looks that could have gave us some room, but didn't go our way, and then it's just a make or miss league down the stretch where, you know, those, those two turnovers, I had, I had one, Draymond had one. It's tough, uh, tough way to go out, and... All those things put together, like we played pretty well. It just ran out of uh, out of gas at the end. What happened on that uh, on your, your turnover in the last? They, I got the ball in, and I was there. There's eight seconds in my head. We didn't have any timeouts because we challenged the the offensive foul they called on me. So. Turn around, obviously, Vasenko came back to try to trap, and we had, you know, kind of a, a flow down the court. And I knew I couldn't call a timeout, so I just tried to make a read, and it was the wrong one. Um, and obviously, Darren hits a three, and then we had a better kind of reaction to them trapping him up court to get it across and had a little miscommunication. So, you know, you obviously want those two plays back because you're up uh, we're up three at the time. Could have changed the narrative of the game. Steve just said, like, he doesn't think you guys are in a free fall. Um, what is this moment right now for this team? How upset is the locker room with this loss? And, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, like, where are you guys at right now? Yeah, obviously, after this one, it's going to be tough to swallow just because you like, should have won that game play well enough to win for 40 minutes um, and knowing the stretch that we've been on we were really motivated I mean the end season tournament was a motivator for sure we knew we had to win by 12 to get out and that was in your head trying to you know get to the finish line and then you end up losing it on top of it so it's, it's a tough pill to swallow for sure frustrating um, you know I think we all got to look ourselves in the mirror and figure out what we individually can do better. You know, in those deciding moments of a game, better decisions, you know, better discipline to not foul. All the little things that we know what, you know, impacts winning. And that's the only way we're going to get out of this, this little funk where, you know, you're playing hard and you have nothing to show for it. What was your take on the on the offensive foul and and the review and explanation? I guess they said you you kicked your leg out, but what did you think? That was uh, I only saw the replay once. I haven't checked it again, but to my like the way I felt, you, you obviously a shooter's going to turn. It was a tough shot, and you got two guys leaving their feet to jump at you. So there's going to be a natural movement to turn. And he said oh, my leg went too high. And there's obviously, a, you know, a judgment on on their part. But anybody who shot that shot, you know, especially you're turning, you know, trying to get your shoulder square, and you land. You also see two people. You got to protect yourself as well. I didn't think it was, you know, uh, exaggerated at all. So the momentum taking them into me, like I felt like they would protect the shooter a little bit better on that call. But obviously, they went to look at it and. Then go my way. Steph, obviously you have a... You can see that Steph Curry's very agitated about the loss tonight as we take a look at the edge presented by Great Resort and Casino. I felt that. But you know what, Fezzi fell? The Warriors lose. They blow a 24-point lead. 
They don't advance in the NCAA tournament, but we made some money tonight. You know what, Bonte? I don't even want this money. Well, this feels, give it to this me feels, I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'll take it. Baby Chess is a school now, oh, man. Bills no, are due I don't want this in a couple days. No. Rent's due in a couple days. No, I'll a, take the money. That was, that was a nasty. No, they cover my one. That. No, I don't. And the overhead. That. I'll take the money. <laughs> That's going to throw it back. <laughs> hey, go ahead and throw it back, man. Niners looking to cut a game in half. They're two, ga two back of the Eagles for a home field advantage. So if they could win, they could be one game behind them, and the Eagles will then travel to Dallas. So it's a monster matchup. Yeah, you, I know you were fired up before the yeah, game. So for anybody who missed the pregame, can yeah. you tell them what the bet is between you and the color commentator for the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, Kyle Draper does play-by-play -play and the host of the pre-post along okay. with Morgan Reagan. And the bet is if the Eagles win, I have to wear a jersey okay. on the pre- and post-game show. And if the Niners jersey. win, yeah. He has to wear the Niners. So Niners wear jersey. Niners jersey. And I'm going to give him an old T.O. jersey that I have that's all wrinkled <laughs> and crusty and it smells so bad. Wow. Get oh, ready geez. for that, Draper. But oh, right wow. now, I'm not focused on that. The Warriors just pull a 20-point lead. I'm hurting right now, buddy. Uh, and if the, if the Niners do the same thing, they'll blow a lead, turning the ball over. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what this came down to. Yeah. Man. I mean, the, Niners, the 49ers, the Warriors did everything they needed to do in the first half. They controlled the turnovers. They didn't go crazy with them. They had a few. They had a few, but they were shooting the ball so well, nope. it, it didn't make a difference. And they played pretty good defense in general. But second half, though, they didn't shoot quite as well. The defense wasn't nearly as good. And the turnovers, you can't defend live ball turnovers. No, you can't. When you give a team nope. 26 points off turnovers, mm. It's hard to beat them. And you foul. You shipped them to the free throw line 42 times. But you know what, Fezzi fell? The Warriors are 8 and 10 right now. And look at their strength of schedule. So, what do you always say? Glass half full? Glass is always half full. Look at this. They've played the toughest schedule in the NBA so far. Wow. How Without having all their guys. Okay. All right. Well, so the, the, the connectivity that we keep talking about, <laughs> the chemistry for this team, which is huge, right? Because at the end of the day, that's the whole point of the Warriors, uh, the way the style of play is the ability to move the ball. The, the Sacramento Kings were sitting in, in passing lanes. Some of the stuff, the Warriors were actually just playing in traffic, right? And turning right. the ball over that way. So for the Warriors, I, I think, so what happens if you don't, if you don't make the tournament, then you have a few days off. Is that what it is? You're going to play some games that are going to yeah. be scheduled here. Right. So you yeah, won't be able to go to Las Vegas or anything like that. It's going to be filled in in the coming hours, right. I think. So, yeah. I mean, this is the last day of the group play. Yep. So, they'll start filling in the schedule. Probably already starting going to work at it right now. So, mm -hmm. um, and it shouldn't be long before we kind of know who, before they know who they're playing and where they're playing. Well, Draymond Green made his return from a five-game suspension, and the Warriors went two and three over that five-game stretch. However, Draymond Green, I thought he had his fingerprints all over this basketball game, especially early on. Let's break down his performance tonight in Sacramento. Well, Draymond, you knew when he was, when he was, uh, when he returned, he was going to come out. Shout out to McKenna, kind of like Andrew Wiggins as well. This is a three-on-one. This is an easy layup, but not on Draymond, not on the former defensive player of the year. That is a block shot, and this is at the start of the game. This is how how the Warriors gained their momentum. Draymond Green at the top of the key, I told you already, when he's at the top, he's looking for these shooters. And Kevon Looney's such a great screener that he gets these guys open. Klay Thompson, two feet on the ground, bow. That's an easy shot right there. This is how easy the Warriors offense is when they're moving the ball. Draymond Green, great screen, passes back to him. What's the stat when he makes two threes in a the game? They were 126 to 26. And then? Now they've lost two straight when he's hit two plus three. So maybe Day Day needs to go back to just hitting one three. <laughs> Draymond Green on De'Aaron Fox, who was killing the Warriors all night. But here it is still. That first half, these are all the things that have to happen yep. when the Warriors are firing all cylinders. And Draymond Green right there is a big part of it. It just has to be the whole game. for, And this is for everybody. They have to play with that same kind of intensity mm -hmm. where they're moving the ball properly and playing defense without fouling. Yeah, Draymond's intensity coming out of the gate was amazing. Yeah, it was. It's what you want to see, you know. Um, it's what they missed. It really is what they missed. And then GP2 comes in and goes up another level, you know. So you, you got that. Second half, Draymond kind of strayed a little bit because he got caught up with the refs, you know. But no. that's not why they lost this game. But but that's not what you want to see either. So it's that's one of those. for him too. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and again. For doing this? 
Yeah, that, that was that's that's gonna get rescinded. He was, he was that, talking yeah. to Gucci man. James I got Williams think, for a little bit. <laughs> he was working to rest a little bit. Oh, he I was reacting think that, to a play, yeah. talking about what the other player on the no. other team was doing. He did this, and he was looking at the ref. That's a carry. Yes, I don't. I don't the think the previous that possession. though, he was talking to both referees. Whoever the one, he went out. And I'm not. Listen, <laughs> so, I think I like, think Draymond. He's lost the benefit of the doubt with these officials. Yeah, but I think you may have a point there. This one might be rescinded because really you look at that when you're going is that really yeah. you know did you have to call that you know well, so this is one that could be could be Steve Kerr had to pull him out the game because he's just to, cool him to him yeah, just to cool him off there yeah. so look Curry he's at the podium early on did he even shower let's hear from Stephen Curry presented by BMW chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh youtube của mình và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc cho các bạn nghe một tập truyện gia tài của một người đàn ông yêu thích mỹ thuật Ông ta say mê đến mức gần như sống về đam mê của mình. Tiêu thập tranh là mục tiêu cả đời của ông. Ông làm việc rất chăm chỉ để dành tiết kiệm nhằm mua thêm các tác phẩm hội họa cho họ sưu tập của mình. Ông mua rất nhiều tác phẩm của các họa sĩ nổi tiếng. Người đàn ông này đã hóa vợ. Ông chỉ có một người con trai. Ông đã truyền lại cho con mình niềm say mê siêu tầm nó. Ông rất tự hào về con trai của mình khi anh ta cũng trở thành một nhà siêu tầm nổi tiếng như ông. Một thời gian sau, đất nước bỗng có chiến tranh. Người con trai cũng như bao thanh niên khác lên đường tổng quân. Và sau một thời gian thì câu chuyện xảy ra. Một hôm, người cha nhận được một lá thư thông báo rằng con đã mất tích khi đang làm nhiệm vụ. Người cha đau khổ đến tận cùng. Thật là khủng khiếp khi người cha không thể biết được điều gì đang xảy ra với con mình. Vài tuần sau, ông nhận được một lá thư nữa. Lá thư này thông báo với ông rằng con trai ông đã hy sinh khi làm nhiệm vụ. Ông gần như chết đi một nửa người. Thật khó khăn khi đọc tiếp lá thư. Đó nhưng ông vẫn cố. Trong thư, người ta báo rằng con ông đã rút lui đến nơi an toàn. Nhưng thấy trên bãi chiến trường vẫn còn đồng đội bị thương. Con ông đã quay lại và đưa về từng thương binh một. Cho đến khi đưa người cuối cùng về gần đến khu vực an toàn thì con ông đã trúng đạn và hy sinh. Một tháng sau, đến ngày Noel, ông không muốn ra khỏi nhà. Ông không thể hình dung được một Noel mà thiếu con trai mình bên cạnh. Ông đang ở nhà thì có một tiếng chuông cửa. Đứng trước cửa là một chàng trai cầm một bọc lớn. Chàng trai nói, thưa bác, Bác không biết cháu, nhưng cháu là người mà con bác đã cứu trước khi hy sinh. Cháu không giàu có, nên cháu không biết đem đến cái gì để đền đáp cho người, cho điều mà con bác đã làm cho cháu. Cháu được anh ấy kể lại rằng bác rất thích siêu tầm tranh. <cười> Bởi vậy, dù cháu không phải là một họa sĩ, cháu cũng vẽ một bức chân dung con trai bác để tặng cho bác. Cháu mong bác nhận cho cháu. Người cha đem bức tranh vào nhà, mở ra và tháo tranh giá trị nhất vẫn <cười> vẫn treo trên nỏ sửa xuống. Video của mình đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo. Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc tiếp phần 2 của câu chuyện gia tài chàng trai ở lại với người cha qua Noel đó rồi hai người chia tay sau vài năm người cha bị bệnh nặng tin tức về việc ông qua đời lan truyền đi rất xa mọi người đều muốn tham gia một cuộc bán đấu giá những tác phẩm nghệ thuật mà ông đã siêu tầm được qua thời gian cuối cùng buổi đấu giá cũng được công bố vào ngày Noel năm đó các nhà siêu tầm và những nhà đại diện cho các viện bảo tàng đều háo hức muốn mua các tác phẩm nổi tiếng và nhà bán đấu giá chật đích người người đều khiến đứng lên và nói tôi xin cảm ơn mọi người đã đến đông độ như vậy bức tranh đầu tiên sẽ là bức chân dung này có người la lên đó là chân dung đứa con trai của cụ thôi sao chúng ta lại phải Sao chúng ta không bỏ qua nó và bắt đầu bằng những bức có giá trị thật sự? Điều Người điều khiển nói, 
Chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu bằng bước này trước. Người điều khiển bắt đầu, ai mua với giá trị 100 đô, không ai trả lời, nên ông lại tiếp. Ai sẽ mua với giá 50 đô, cũng không ai trả lời, nên ông lại hỏi. Có ai mua với giá 40 đô không? Cũng không ai muốn mua. Người điều khiển lại hỏi. Không ai muốn trả giá cho bức tranh này sao? Một người đàn ông già đứng lên, anh có thể bán với giá 10 đô được không? Anh thấy đấy, 10 đô là tất cả những gì tôi có. Tôi là hàng xóm của ông cụ và tôi biết thằng bé đó. Tôi đã thấy thằng bé đó lớn lên và thực sự yêu quý nó. Tôi rất muốn có bức tranh đó, vậy anh có đồng ý không? Người điều khiển nói, 100 lần, 10 đô lần thứ nhất, lần thứ nhì bán. Tiếng hồn ào vui mừng, nổi lên và mọi người nói với nhau. Chúng ta đã bắt đầu thật sự được rồi Người điều khiển nói Xin cảm ơn mọi người đã đến Thật là vinh hạnh khi có mặt Của những vị khách quý ở đây Bởi đấu giá của chúng ta sẽ dừng lại tại đây Đám đông nổi giận Anh nói là hết đấu giá sao Anh vẫn chưa đấu giá toàn bộ các tác phẩm nổi tiếng kia mà Người điều khiển nói Tôi xin lỗi nhưng mỗi đấu giá đã chấm dứt, mọi người hãy xem chúc thư của cụ ông đây. Người nào lấy bức chân dung con tôi sẽ được tất cả các bức tranh còn lại. Và đó là lời cuối cùng. Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo.